Welcome to Everyday Christianity, where we explore how the principles of Christianity impact our everyday lives. Join us as we delve into the timeless wisdom of the Bible, applying its principles to build stronger relationships, find purpose in our careers, nurture thriving families, and deepen our connection with God. Hey, welcome to the Everyday Christianity podcast, where we talk about practical things, practical advice for daily living, and we desire to be helpful to you in your journey with Christ as we live as disciples, followers of Jesus, who are also sowing the seeds and making disciples for Jesus Christ. Uh, we have been uh, talking the last couple of sessions in and around the complexities of the pressures of life, and especially around the subject of being hurried. Letting the urgent crowd out the important is really not a good strategy for living as a disciple of Jesus. So today we want to tackle uh, a couple of uh, specific subjects. We're going to deal uh, first with anxiety as it relates to uh, hurry and nervousness and uncertainty and fear. And then we're eventually going to talk about, uh, how to live in the spiritual discipline of a godly attitude. Having the same attitude of Christ is what Paul says. So both of these, uh, passages are in Philippians. And today we're going to begin with, uh, Philippians chapter four, uh, verses six through seven. I think Dwayne is going to, uh, share those verses with us. Yes, and I'm reading from the New King James Version, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, at times that you're being prodded to be anxious. How hard, Ray, is this to actually put into application? <laughs> it says, don't be anxious. <laughs> like, wait a minute. <laughs> How can I stop my emotions? <laughs> it's, 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 e- it's easier said than done. But we're all going to fa- face anxious moments. And, it, and it's not saying it's wrong to be anxious. We're going to be anxious, but... We need to put a filter on it um, and just back away from it and, and kind of, you know, get the old saying, count to 10 before we act or react. Because the tendency when you're anxious about something is to make decisions irrationally, to make poor choices, to say the wrong things, um, to just be hyped up and um, not be yourself. And so I think this verse gives us great application of like, hey, Listen, when this thing comes on, first of all, stop, pray, <clears throat> say, Lord, you've got to take over the situation. So it's a, it's a total um, giving over of whatever you're experiencing to the Lord for him to take control because he's the only one to give us peace. We can't, we mm-hmm. can't manufacture that. Only God can yeah. give us that peace. And so by handing it all over to him, it's like a friend of mine said, every morning we should come – to the Lord in prayer with this big sack, almost like a Santa Claus sack over our shoulder with all the things we're worried about. And we just need to pull them out one item at a time and say, Lord, this is such and such. I want to give it over to you to take control. Lord, this is another area. And just kind of, and they said, by the time you empty that bag, you should be able to experience that peace that only God can give us because you've laid it all out before him and you've let go and you've let God. And now, he does his work in your life. But but that's hard. <laughs> that's yeah, hard. It is. I, it's I real can hard. think of <laughs> practical applications in our family in the last six months where I've, I, I know four specific instances where I try to practice this in my own life. I'm a better coach than I am <laughs> a player in, in this. But I can think of specific instances where – Wow, there's disappointment. Mm-hmm. Disappointment on top of disappointment. Disappointment on top of disappointment. And you, it, 
it sounds it is easy to say and it's mm-hmm. so hard to be taken properly but turn it over to god mm-hmm. turn it over pray about are you praying about this decision are you turning it over to god mm-hmm. are you willing to I, I think about this uh somebody we we had a uh, a recent event that was a praise and uh uh, I, I said, praise the Lord. I said, but if not, if that had not happened, mm-hmm. praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're still mm-hmm. going to praise the Lord. That's mm-hmm. what we're going to yeah. do. And so mm-hmm. I, I look at myself and, uh, you know, I, I talk to men, but also talk to my family and, and turn into God. Turn in. This is what I see coming out loud and clear is prayer. Turn it over to God and let mm-hmm. him be in control. All right. I, you mm-hmm. know what? You guys are describing the very way you move from anxiety to mm-hmm. peace. It, it's fascinating to me to kind of roll all this up from the big picture. I mean, uh, Solomon told us in Ecclesiastes, hey, there is nothing new under the sun. Mm-hmm. And so it's so fascinating mm-hmm. to think here we are with all of our modern studies Great writings. You got Lawrence Kohlberg, Jean Piaget. You've got uh, Neil Anderson from a Christian perspective who wrote about the exchange life. Hmm. Paul wrote about all of these things in the New Testament when he said, you know, the old person was crucified with Christ. Mm-hmm. You're a new creation right. with Christ. That's the exchange life. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Kohlberg, Piaget, and now many psychologists have taught us, hey, you can't stop thinking a thought. All right. That's that's how they'll frame it. And so when we tell somebody, hey, don't be anxious yeah. or you shouldn't feel that way, uh, unless we offer them the practical advice of how that gets displaced. You don't stop thinking a thought. Mm-hmm. It gets displaced by a stronger thought or another thought or a more urgent thought. So just think about that as he's saying, all right, don't be anxious about anything. Well, nobody knows how to do that. <laughs> Except then he says, replace that anxiety mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. prayer, supplication, Thanksgiving, supplication, I would think, would be not only asking for myself and my family, but intercession for others. Would you all agree with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And let your request be known to God. So don't be anxious. Start talking to God. That's what he's saying. And, you know, when it says uh, in everything by prayer, and I've, I've talked to different believers about this, and it seems like some people only hold back the large requests before they pray about things. In other words, they don't they don't think of the little things. Well the little things mount up and cause a lot of anxiety. And and you know, prayer for, hey, I just pray that the kids will behave themselves today. Or the pray that that they have a good day at school so they don't come home all wired up, you know, to try to try to try to handle. So so even the small things, I mean, my wife is notorious for praying about lost things and she will find the most minute thing, whether it be a sock or something <laughs> in some part of the, I mean, she'll pray about everything. And it's just taught me that this is serious. We need to pray about everything that concerns us because God is real and he's there and he's just waiting just like a father to, to help us. Yeah, that's and, good. Image. And so everything from the smallest to the bigs, God is just not there for the big items. He's there for the little items and I think that's important in your everyday life to trust them in every detail from work to home life to marriage to raising kids to family issues. It, it, it's everything. For the, for the believer to not be in daily prayer time is um, you, you're, you're not practiced. And so when the big things come around, it's not something that you're used to doing. And and so to your point, Ray, about praying and small things, pray every day. Mm-hmm. I, I know uh, Jesus gave us a prayer. Uh, uh, he, he, he said a prayer that we uh, should pray. And we, it's the format. But, you know, every morning, give honor to the Father. 
Mm-hmm. Ask him for his will to be done. Ask him for his will to be done in your life. Ask him for him to direct you where you should be going mm-hmm. today. Ask, you know, if you're doing that, and I, this is what I call usually, uh, you know, with my family member, I never tell them not to be anxious, but mm-hmm. I do tell them, I said, hey, make sure you're leaning into Jesus. Mm-hmm. Make sure you lean into Christ. And if you're, in prayer on a daily basis, leaning into him and depending on him, then you're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. It is going to be okay. Whether you get the answer that you want or we get the best answer, which is what God wants to have happen. But that's what's going to happen. You guys got me fired up about this first because it occurs to me that it's one thing to mentally go through this exercise but it's another thing to include some other spiritual disciplines, like writing down these promises, mm. memorizing this, these two verses. Oh my gosh, this this probably needs to be in your top five or ten of memory verses. This it's it's so in the useful. topical memory system. Yeah, so you got to memorize it. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we go. Uh, but in my in my journal. Uh, as I go back and look at it over the years, I literally have asked God, what shall we do about yeah. this subject, this person, this relationship, this job, mm-hmm. this career, this mess? Mm-hmm. This I, Literally, I, I can remember looking back in my journal and saying, God, uh, how will we move to a place being debt free in this church. Mm, yeah. mm, I literally I, asked wow. God mm-hmm. that question. And I got to tell you, here's what I felt. It's not like the bank canceled all of our debts, but I did feel like I'd given the onus of the problem to the only per- mm. person who could solve it. Mm-hmm. So it's, it, it again, it's about the replacement of whatever it is that's got us troubled. And then having the discipline to move there to talking with God and being with God in prayer, maybe in journaling, maybe in quiet time, maybe in singing. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But look, he even, you know, make your requests known to God. And he even in verse seven here says, here is the sure result or the fruit that will be born out of your willingness to handle it this way. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ. That's huge because, you know, it says says the peace of God, which surpasses. In other words, it's something you can't even describe. When I read this, I just was reminded back in 07, 08, when the recession really hit pretty hard. You know, we we insure companies and we get paid per employee per month. And so a lot of our clients were downsizing as far as, you know, their employee base. And so as a result, our income was depleting. Right. And I was struggling with laying off people and I was just a wreck. And then I just remember just a time when I just, you know, I tried to make it work and tried to, you know, get more clients and it just wasn't working. And so I remember one night just saying, God, I said, I don't know if. If I, I know I've given you this business, but I really am giving you this business. <laughs> it's, now it's, it's going down the tube. <laughs> it's all it's yours. yours. <laughs> and I said, regardless, I said, I don't know what the future holds, whether you're going to take me out of this industry or what's going to happen, but I totally am laying this out before you and trust that you know the best. And honestly, it was almost as if I physically felt this peace that, it's going to be okay yeah, no matter what it, happens. It wasn't solved in that moment. It was But the peace wasn't. came over you. And right? I, yeah. I, think, I think the point being is the peace came. Of course, it came from God. But the peace was, you know what? If this is stripped away, I'm still okay. If this, if this financial you know, industry just dissolves, I'm okay. And ever since then, it's almost like instilled in me that, Regardless of what happens, God is in control. I am not. <laughs> as much as we think, what some of my friends said, control is an illusion. God is the only one that's in control. So I think God supernaturally gives us a peace in our hearts that, that's undescribed. You know, it says it surpasses all understanding. In other words, you can't put words to it. When God's peace fills your heart, 
There's no words that can describe it. It's just such a comfort and such a relaxation that it's okay. No matter what happens, it's okay. And you can't manufacture that personally in your own strength. I, I want to go back and reemphasize what Pastor Steve was hitting on about the the disciplines because I've been taking a class in the book of Revelation, and one of the things that uh, I've learned is that the church in Philadelphia, which was the church that Christ had no uh, no sins for, th- they weren't extraordinary, but they were normal. They were the normal example of what Christians are hmm. to do, how to live your life every day as a Christ follower. You're in the Word. You read the Scriptures. Hmm. You pray. You meditate and memorize scriptures as mm-hmm. you're talking about. You fellowship with fellow believers and encourage and build people up. And it's these things. They're not anything that's extraordinary, right. but the Church right. of Philadelphia was doing them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Christ acknowledged that they were doing the right thing and to keep it up until his return. Mm. But that's what we're called to do as the body of believers and if anybody ever has any doubt, those are those are I, I'm the old football player and coach. It's blocking and tackling, guys. Hmm. It is not anything that's complicated. Mm-hmm. It is literally blocking and tackling. Mm-hmm. Are you reading your Bible on a daily basis? Are you in prayer on a daily basis? Are you memorizing and studying the scriptures? And are you fellowshipping with other be- believers and and sharing the gospel? Mm-hmm. And sharing the gospel. Mm-hmm. I forgot that one, but sharing the All gospel. Right. So, I, yeah. So in terms of some really practical advice for daily living, if you'd like to see this uh, proof texted, then just turn in your Bible and read Acts 2, uh, verses 42 and beyond that. That was the New Testament church. Mm-hmm. If you'd like to see this discipline that Dwayne was speaking of at work in the Old Testament— Go to Deuteronomy chapter Mm 6 and read about what the Shema was about in terms of training children up in the way of the Lord Mm -hmm. and how God says, you know, you need to impress this upon your mind. Well, that's so, in my mind, that's so synonymous with Scripture memory uh, in terms and giving thanks to God for the way he's been moving. So in terms of practical advice for you all today as we kind of wrap it up, Hey, we want to commend Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7 to you. And we want to commend it to you uh, with homework, so to speak, <laughs> encourage you to commit it to memory. All right? And then once you've mastered that, and that may take two, three, four days, I don't know. That's okay. But once you've mastered that, then begin to pray that as the displacement <laughs> thought for when you're in a panic or the bottom drops out or you get super anxious or whatever. Mm-hmm. Hey, isn't it wonderful that God's got solutions that are tried and true and every trailhead of those solutions lead to him, his presence and the beauty of his promise. Thanks for being with us today. If we can help you in your journey, reach out to us at mountpisca.org. And until we meet again, Ray, Dwayne, Joel, And Pastor Steve, God bless you. We love you and stay the course. If you found value in today's episode, don't forget to subscribe and share the podcast with your friends and family. For any questions or feedback, feel free to reach out to us at everydaychristianity at mountpisgah.org. And you can find all the relevant links in the show notes. Until next time, God bless.